Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a platform where you can design beautiful websites and host your online store. So I get DMs and emails on a daily basis of people asking me, what do I think of this camera? What do I think of that camera? Should I get this camera or that camera? I just found this camera in my grandmother's attic. Can I take a photograph of the Milky Way? And I just can't answer all of those questions as much as I would love to. And not just because of the amount of time that it would take up, but also because it's such a subjective question to answer. Like, I don't know how serious this person is about astrophotography. I don't know how much money they earn or how much money they're willing to invest into photography. And I don't know what their standards of quality are. But if you were to ask me, what is the best camera for landscape astrophotography in terms of price versus performance? I would very, very confidently say the Canon 60. And I'm not talking about the newer Canon 60 Mark II with the flippy screen. I'm talking about the original Canon 60 that was released or announced about 10 years ago. Now, depending on where you are in the world, the price of this camera is just so accessible. I mean, here in the UK, you can pick one up secondhand for under 500 pounds. It's the camera that I used to start building my portfolio. So I'm shooting on a Canon 60. Mounted to the top, I've got my Canon 60. And it's still being used by some of the best astrophotographers in the world right now, who I will show towards the end of the video. So make sure to stick around for that. But I'm also going to prove how successful, how good and how popular this camera is with data because everybody loves data, right? Now, Anthony Robinson has compiled data from the past three years of the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition, which is run by the Royal Observatory of Greenwich. And in his results, he found that the Canon 6D is the most featured camera in the past three years of shortlisted images. Pretty much one in every 10 image that has been shortlisted in that competition for the past three years has been taken with the Canon 60. So immediately there's some proof that this camera is very popular in the world of astronomy and astrophotography, but it also goes to show that this camera performs well. And what's interesting is that it, this is only the past three years of the competition. I'm sure that if you go further back uh, and look at the data from the previous years of the competition, the Canon 60 will only become more dominant. It becomes even more impressive if you just single out the landscape astrophotography images and then the Canon 60 becomes responsible for 20% of the shortlisted entries from the past three years. So that's one in every five image. That's crazy. And it gets even more surprising when you take a look at the deep sky astronomy photographs. So the Canon 60 was second and that just goes to show the versatility of this camera. So not only is it the most popular landscape astrophotography camera, the most successful, but it's second place in the deep sky category as well, where it's competing against dedicated, cooled astronomy cameras. The data is super interesting and it looks into more things like the most used telescopes and lenses. And I'll put a link in the video description down below if you'd like to check it out. But what is it about the Canon 60 that makes it so popular and so successful in astrophotography. The sensor is a 20.2 megapixel full frame sensor. So some pretty interesting things to mull over here. First of all, it's full frame. When we're talking landscape astrophotography, ideally you want a full frame sensor because they do have an advantage over crop sensors and micro four thirds sensors. A lot of people will tell you that the sensor is bigger so that it collects more light. Um, which is only really a very small part of the story. Um, it's actually the lenses that are designed for full frame cameras can guide more light onto the sensor. Another advantage to having a full frame, having a bigger sensor is you can spread the pixels out and that improves the thermal performance of the sensor. And you're able to have pixels of a, a wider width, a wider pixel width. So these wider openings are more efficient and they're more efficient at collecting light. So there's a lot of reasons that full frame is better than crop sensors, especially when it comes to landscape astrophotography. Now, being 20 megapixels, in my opinion, is a really good compromise between having good low light performance and good detail. Because the more pixels you try and cram onto a sensor, 
the worse the noise performance generally tends to become because you're packing smaller pixels onto the sensor, you're packing them tighter, and so the thermal performance is not as good. So generally speaking, the less megapixels you have on a sensor, the more spread out they are, the bigger they are, the better they're gonna perform in low light. So for me, 20 to 24, maybe 30 and a push is a really good middle ground between low light performance and having good detail. The other huge advantage to having just 20 megapixels is that the RAW files are pretty small. If you have a 40 megapixel camera, a 60 megapixel camera, the RAW files can be really big in terms of megabytes. And that means that you're gonna to have to buy extra storage, extra hard drives, that's gonna be an investment. And it also means that your computer needs to be more powerful to handle these bigger files, especially in astrophotography where you're stacking loads of images for noise reduction or trying to create a really nice big panorama. You'd have to have a more powerful computer to deal with the bigger files. Now, before I keep talking about why this camera is so amazing, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store. And I know from personal experience because my website's been hosted on Squarespace for years now and I've been a very happy customer. You can use Squarespace as a blog, you can host your images there in a gallery and the images don't get compressed, they look incredible. And you can use it to sell products. So it's where I sell my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets, my calendars, and all of the payments are automatically handled by Squarespace. Everything's seamless, and it means I can spend more of my time taking images and making videos. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, go to squarespace.com forward slash Allen, start your free trial. You can design your website starting with one of their award-winning templates. And then when you're happy with your website and you want it to go live, use the code Allen at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. Now, another benefit to this camera is the EF mount, the Canon EF mount of lenses. This mount was introduced in 1987. It's older than me. So... <laughs> People have been making lenses for this mount longer than I've been on this planet. So you have a huge selection of vintage lenses and Canon lenses and third party lenses of you know, varying price and quality for the EF mount. It's a very well established mount. So there's a whole host of lenses to pick from and you can find something within your price range. That said, it's not always about the price. For example, the Canon 14 millimeter F2.8 was really bad for astrophotography compared to the much cheaper Samyang 14mm f2.8 manual focus lens. The Samyang 24mm f1.4 manual focus lens was one of my favorite lenses. I still adore that lens. I think it's a legend in the astrophotography world and I love the 24mm focal length. Um, you get a real nice amount of detail and when you do panoramas, the images just look absolutely incredible and so there are two very affordable lenses that perform incredibly well for astrophotography there are also versatile zoom lenses like the Tokina 16 to 28 millimeter f 2.8 or the incredibly sharp tamron 50 uh, tamron 15 to 30 millimeter f 2.8 now, I mentioned that this camera is still used by some of the best astrophotographers in the world right now. So I'm gonna show you a few of those and starting with none other than a good friend of mine, Adrian Mordwit, who now online goes by his company name, which is Night Lights Films. Adrian, of course, being one of the best Northern Lights photographers out there. So you can see the EXIF at the top here, Canon 60, Sigma 14 millimeter, shares his EXIF settings as well, which is great. Another image of the 6D, some incredible images of the Aurora with the Canon 60. And he's also got some really incredible images of the Milky Way with his modified 60. And you'll notice that all of the astrophotographers I show you have all modified their 60. This image here is an absolutely incredible piece of work with the Canon 60 and a Samyang 135mm f2. Using a Star Adventure or Star Trek, and I will warn you, it takes a lot of skill to create an image this good. Moving on to Petr Horolek, who I think is one of, if not the best, landscape astrophotographer there is right now. Um, beautiful image of him here, sitting next to a lake. Again, his 60 is astro-modified. Um, and I'm pretty sure most, if not all, people with the Canon 60 go for the beta mod. So you remove a filter from in front of the sensor, replace it with a beta filter, which allows more of this red 
hydrogen alpha light through onto the sensor. If you don't know anything about Astro Modified Cameras, check out my video linked above and down below. Um, but there's a really cool 360 VR panorama here, which you can look around. Absolutely incredible. And again, shares his EXIF data, so Canon 6D modified the Samyang 24mm, which I talked about just a moment ago. F2.2 ISO 8000 single 15 second exposures taken from a tripod with no tracking. So Canon 6D, just absolutely incredible. An image here from Patagonia in the southern hemisphere with the gum nebula, the large and small Magellanic clouds. Again, Canon 60 modified with the Samyang 24mm. Stunning detail, colors are perfect, white balance is spot on. I just love the color science of Canon. And I think Peta is the king of meteor shower images. So um, this is one of his average meteor shower images. Um, really nice image of the Orionids. Again, just incredible detail. Perfect white balance, really nice black sky. Colors are great. Detail is amazing in the foreground here. Absolutely no noise on the horizon either. And looking at the EXIF, yep, Canon 60, Sigma 35mm this time. That's where the amazing detail is coming from. ISO 6400. And it's a panorama of 28 panels. And then the meteors were captured with a time-lapse in Canon 60 and the Samyang 12mm fisheye lens. On to Thomas Slavinsky. Again, another photographer who's just... Really, really perfect in his processing, the white balance, the colors, everything is just so spot on. This image here taken with the Canon 60 modded, Sigma Art 28mm, and the Skywatcher Star Adventure. It's a HA RGB image. Uh, I made a video about HA RGB images, which you can check out. I'll link it down below. Um, but the HA filter just helps you bring out these hydrogen alpha nebulas in incredible detail. So, beautiful image from the Tatra Mountains, the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex, California Nebula, Mars, Pleiades, Andromeda, beautiful zodiacal light, amazing detail in the foreground, pretty much no noise going on, perfect colors, perfect white balance, just absolutely beautiful. And another image from Thomas, another one of my favorites from his uh, taken in La Palma, one of my favorite places in the world. Again, Canon 60 mod, Sigma Art 50mm, so expect some incredible detail. Skywatcher Star Adventure. It's another HA RGB image, and uh, he's taking 25 second exposures, 120 seconds for the HA, f2.2, ISO 6400. Again, just everything about this image is perfect. The white balance and the colors, the color size of Canon, this beautiful green air glow, the gorgeous red color of the hydrogen alpha emission nebulae, that gorgeous rusty orange of the Milky Way core, incredible detail in the foreground, very minimal noise, just an absolutely incredible camera. And, well, credit to all of the artists because they are <laughs> incredibly skilled and perfect in their processing. So I think the last question to answer is, how can I stand here and make a video about the Canon 6D when I sold mine and replaced it with a Sony camera? Uh, the answer to that question starts with this camera here, the A7S II. When I saw the capability of this camera to film the Milky Way and the stars at night, I just focused every amount of energy on saving every penny I could to buy this camera so I could start my astro vlogs and I could start sharing my adventures under the stars. And at first, I loved this camera and I was using my Canon lenses with an adapter, the Sigma MC11 adapter, so I could use my Canon lenses on the Sony A7S. And I still had my 6D to photograph my stills. But I wanted to start buying Sony lenses because they have an incredible, small, lightweight uh, prime lenses that perform incredibly well for astrophotography. And as I started acquiring Sony lenses, I was carrying two sets of lenses, two cameras, and it just didn't make sense. And when Canon released the 6D Mark II, I was very disappointed. It had worse low light performance than the original Canon 6D, and all it did was come with a flippy screen for 
you know, a much more expensive price. And then Sony released the A7 III. Now, this camera was a very highly specced yet very well priced hybrid camera. So it's good for both photos and videography. And as my vlogs were becoming a bigger part of my brand and my online presence, uh, the, video, the video capabilities of this camera were quite attractive. There's a couple of other things that I love about Sony cameras. The first being the bright monitoring feature where you can preview your composition at night in the dark. It's really incredible. And I also love the ISO invariance of this sensor, being able to shoot at ISO 640 to protect the highlights and boost the exposure in post-production if I need to, is something I find so, so useful. And if you don't know what ISO invariance is or why it's so useful, you should definitely check out my video, which I'll link up above and down below. But yeah, I, I certainly miss the, the raw quality from Canon and the color science. Um, of Canon, which I think is much better than Sony. So, you know, I don't like people who get too caught up in the gear. These are just tools to get the job done. There's things I love about this camera, there's things I hate about this camera, there's things I love about the 6D, there's things I don't like about the 6D, and you know, it's just whatever works for you. And if you were to ask me, what is the best camera for the cheapest price for landscape astrophotography? It is most definitely the Canon 60.